in my car I needed a clock. Uh, <coughs> I bought a new car, say approximately two months ago, and there was no clock. And I needed uh, a clock also in my uh, other car. <coughs> there was, uh, say, a time indication. And of course I'm not talking about, say, all the modern things that we have normally nowadays in a car. The clock is more or less standard, but anyway, no problem with that. So I had to make a, such a clock uh, more or less in a primitive way. <coughs> and my advice is never, never be ashamed when you make electronic circuits in a kind of primitive way. Uh, that's my approach and I'm absolutely sure about it. Well, anyway, I use this clock. It's from Casio. They were, by the way, very cheap in the past, approximately 10 euros and they are exactly functioning very, very precise time. Say, perhaps during a, a year uh, there's one minute deviation or so, perhaps 10 seconds, I don't know that exactly, but they do, they work very, very properly. Uh, the problem is, however, that the plastic, say, band often breaks off after approximately four years or so. So that's the reason why you see this leather band mounted to this clock, <coughs> anyway. Uh, I bought quite a few of them in the past, and here you see another one that's here in this project. Uh, say the strap, the band is uh, taken off, and then you have the pure clock in its bare essentials, and there is a battery inside. And on the background of these Casio clocks, you will find this. And you can open it, replace the battery, etc. etc. But uh, that's more or less a side pass. I was talking about uh, this clock uh, that I wanted to use in my car, my new car. Uh, and here is the schematic. And that schematic is, of course, uh, extremely simple. <coughs> I don't need uh, constantly uh, illumination of the screen of the clock. So there's a switch here and I have used by purpose a 10 ohm resistor and that's completely all to tell when we are talking about electronics. Of course, uh, well, this is not a difficult project anyway. So let's see what happens. I found <coughs> that this uh, battery, 9 volt battery, is classic standard 9 volt battery, properly works. And I used, and that's the most important thing to tell regarding uh, this video, that I could use the salvage LEDs out of that say a 230 volt LED lamp that I've taken out and I will surely give a link in the text box in the description about these LEDs. These LEDs have the very good property that they can be connected directly to 9 volts and they, their uh, light emittance is extremely fierce, very very fierce. So, a good combination, you can directly connect it to a 9 volt battery and the light effect is extremely high. Anyway, I want to demonstrate that. So, when I'm <coughs> driving in the dark, of course, I need uh, to know the time. Anyway, 
So here is that lead. And you can see it here. I want to switch off all the lights on my workbench. So here is that lead and it's extremely fierce. That's very good. And so when I have this in my car, I can switch on the, the light and you can surely see that it is so fierce uh, that even the, the scale of the clock is so fiercely uh, made visible that it's more or less, it seems to be impossible to write, to read, that's what I mean, the, the time. But in general it has something to do with my camera I think or the fact that I have uh, switched off all the lights on the workbench so there's no backlight. I surely now can read the time. It's 19.35 in the Netherlands on 4 April 2022. Anyway, so I will uh, mount it in my car. I can slide it in. There's a kind of uh, hole in the dashboard where I can slide it in properly. And I have, of course, a measured that, etc., so that the whole clock here matches to uh, the dimensions in the dashboard. Anyway, good idea, perhaps, is because this LED is so fierce, and we have a kind of uh, fierce reflection to mount, for instance, here on the top kind of, say, uh, piece of material that makes it, uh, that takes away the reflection anyway. This is a screen, plastic screen, that reflects the very fierce LED. But, uh, like I thought earlier, I can surely, surely read the clock. So, perhaps there's a better way to demonstrate it when I perhaps take away the reflection. So, here you can see it. 19.37. Anyway, primitive solution to make such a clock. But uh, perhaps it's useful anyway. And of course, uh, it's a primitive solution, but never be, say, uh, ashamed of these primitive solutions that can work for many, many years with this battery, for instance, classic uh, alkaline battery. <coughs> it will surely work for approximately five years or so. And in the dark I can switch on the clock and switch it off. So that was all to tell. Thanks for watching.